All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to What Cheers. I'm Nick, as always, and I got to tell you right off the bat, this is definitely the latest review I've ever shot. It's a quarter to four in the morning right now. Yeah, um, definitely ready to get into these. Um, I was sampling both of these earlier in the evening uh, with my dad and my girlfriend, and um, I decided to take what's left of these and do a quick review on them, or try to make it quick at least. Um, got a quite a bit left to drink of these, so um, yeah, as you already know and you can tell, um, this is the Hill Farmstead Everett Porter and the brand new Batch 3 Barrel Aged Everett Porter. Um, a couple weeks ago when I was in Vermont, Vermont with my girlfriend, we were lucky enough that um, Everett was on draft for Growler Fills and just so happened that uh, the Barrel Age ever it was released. Uh, very, very sought after beer. Um, they've only done three batches of this beer so far, um, according to Beer Advocate, and uh, this is obviously batch three. Um, uh, let's go back to the Everett for a second. So the Everett Porter is one of Hill Farmstead's like staple beers, one of their first beers, like the Edward Pale Ale and stuff like that. Um, and it is arguably the best American Porter made today by anybody. Um, I believe it's still number one on the Beer Advocate lists of American Porters. Um, definitely one of the highest rated beers. Um, and in that category, it just pretty much tops it. Um, it's just an American Porter. Um, and actually, I think I have the, um, the stats on that right here. Sorry, guys. It's kind of late, so... Um, yeah, pale caramel and chocolate malt, roasted barley, Columbus hops, ale yeast, and our well water. That's for the regular Everett, um, which is 7.5% American Porter. Um, and, you know, that is one that you can get in bottles as well. Um, it is available um, every now and again in bottles, but um, as well as on draft for growler fills. Um, aside from that, um, the barrel aged version is uh, quite a different animal. This one is aged, this particular batch was aged for over 26 months, it says on the back, um, in uh, hand selected bourbon barrels. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a collection of bourbon barrels from different distilleries or if it's one um, company hand selected barrels, I'm not sure. But either way, um, it is aged for, what's that, two years and four months at least, um, or probably two years, two months, maybe two years and four months. Um, and the weird thing is that it says it's only 8% alcohol, but the regular version is 7.5%. So after 26 months at least of bourbon barrels, I do have a hard time believing that it would only be 8%, half a percent higher than the original. Um, and we'll get to that as soon as I open it. Um, lastly, I want to say this was bottled on, in says it was bottled in May. I picked it up in July. Um, this growler right here is only three weeks old. Honestly, for, you know, they want you to drink the growlers from Hill Farmstead within seven days, but for a beer like this, it's a porter, really not that critical you can definitely go three weeks to a month on this no problem even with the ipas to be honest and they're pretty damn good still definitely not as good as you know the day you fill it but growlers definitely hold up if you keep them cold keep them out of light no problem um so guys i think i covered everything so yeah we're gonna take a look at what what happens when you throw uh the best american porter made today in bourbon barrels so let's get these poured and Check them out, guys. All right, guys, there's the beers poured out. And um, this one I just poured, and it's just the head was there, and then it just completely fizzed out really fast, which, in my opinion, tells me it's got some alcohol to it. Um, it did have the same color, kind of light khaki head, very kind of big, big bubbles on the barrel age version. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's... It's black. Um, it looks black in the glass. Um, as you drink through it, you can probably see through it. It's kind of a dark, dark ruby red color, but we'll get into that as I drink it. Um, but yeah, they honestly look pretty much the same, except um, this one 
the head fizzed away really fast, like a high alcohol beer would. Um, and this one is just kind of this khaki colored kind of creamy head. Um, I didn't pour it too, too aggressively, but you could definitely produce a big kind of creamy um, marshmallow type um, kind of head on this one um, if you wanted to. But guys, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the um, aroma on the regular version of Everett. <laughs> it's just chocolate. I mean, it's chocolate, 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 like sweet milk chocolate, um, dark chocolate, cocoa, um, coffee, like f this dark roast coffee. Definitely like a creamy kind of sweetness, almost like um, almost like a a coffee with um, like creamer in it, like chocolate. It's just, but not. I don't want to make it sound artificial, but it smells just really creamy, like a like a dessert kind of. Oh man, just a, and I'm definitely getting those hops though, the Columbus hops. I'm definitely getting like a, a little bit of that of that character, that hoppy character, just kind of um, jumping out at me. But just chocolate, creamy chocolate, coffee, just absolutely mouth-watering dessert type aroma to this one. Um, yeah, just really nice stuff, guys. And both of these beers have been sitting out. They're perfect temperature right now, just like chilled, not too cold, not too warm, nothing like that. It's getting aroma on the barrel age, guys. <laughs> it's literally like someone just dropped a, a, sh a shot of bourbon into the glass. I mean, it's it's bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. Unfortunately, um, that's a little bit of a detriment to this beer. Um, 26 plus months in bourbon barrels, you're gonna expect bourbon. I mean, if I didn't get an overload of bourbon, probably wouldn't have believed um, what was written on the bottle, you know what I mean? It's just whiskey, um, roasted malt, maybe chocolate. Um, but the more I breathe in, the heavier I breathe in. It's just chocolate and bourbon. There's nothing else there, really. It's not overly complex for the aroma on this. And unfortunately, I think that's um, that's too bad, you know, because um, obviously it's a very, very special beer, so... Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get into the taste on both of these bad boys and see what they got to offer. First ever. Cheers. I'm telling you guys, if you... Oh, my God. If someone told you this was an Imperial Stout, you'd believe them. I mean, this thing is as full-bodied, luscious, creamy, silky smooth... Oh man, it's so freaking good. If you guys haven't had this beer, Everett, it's just fucking incredible. I mean, you don't need the rarest Till Farmstead beer. Um, you can just get Everett, you can get Edward, they're fucking amazing. Um, that is just delicious beyond words, honestly. It doesn't even remind you of a porter, which can be good or bad depending on who you're talking to, but... I don't care. It's freaking awesome. It is so, just, it's so full bodied and so full of flavor. Right up front, first sip, pop of sweetness right off the bat, this nice kind of creamy sweetness. Immediately middle of the mouth, you just, your mouth is just inundated with chocolate, coffee, some bite from the hops. Um, and it's just this very, very silky smooth, kind of luscious feel um, as you swish it around. And it's just, it's like a dessert beer, but it doesn't come across being like overly heavy, which is really interesting. I always am always surprised when I have Everett how drinkable it is for such a like big bodied, um, you know, rich porter. It's just an absolute freaking delight and a joy to drink. You know, it's just amazing, again, that, that it's such a dessert-type tasting beer. The chocolate and coffee and creamy and silky smooth. And 
honestly, like you just want to go back for another sip as soon as you swallow. You don't feel like it's too heavy or too like rich um, with even with all the rich flavors, which is just mind blowing how he created this beer, in my opinion. Um, after you swallow, I mean, this the, I'm talking and the flavors from this beer when you have it in your mouth is still what's left over on your mouth. I'm still tasting chocolate. I'm still tasting coffee. It's just like kind of dry, a um, little bit sticky, but dry kind of um, chocolate and coffee finish after you just drank a little bit of coffee. A little bit of that sticky sweetness, but just absolutely mind-blowingly good. Um, there's nothing more I can say. I mean, this is like a three week to a month old growler and it tastes like it was just poured straight from the tap. It's just that good. Um, a creamy, delicious delight is the best way to put it. Um, anyways, let's, let's move on to the barrel aged Everett. Ooh, very, very special. Let's check this one out, guys. Cheers. Wow. Wow, wow. Ooh. I'm telling you right now, guys, there's no way this beer is 8%. I want some clarification from Sean Hill. I don't know where that number came from. It ain't true. Um, if someone knows that's watching this or can get info, I'd love to know a little bit more because I just don't believe it. I'm not saying that's in a bad way. I'm just saying this just BS that it's 8%. Um, if it is 8%, it's the booziest 8% beer I've ever seen or had. Um, right up front, the thing that gets me the most about this is the high carbonation. This thing is spritzy, um, like really spritzy. I mean, Bourbon County has that kind of spritziness. It's very highly carbonated, so it, it's very reminiscent of that. Now, Bourbon County is an Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels. This is an American Porter aged in bourbon barrels. A big difference here. But as soon as I take my first sip, huge amount of carbonation just spritzing, you know, away at your palate. Um, the taste is definitely better than the aroma, in my opinion. It's got more going on. Um, immediately get that hit of whiskey, you know, bourbon. Um, just that kind of spirit comes comes alive, comes out, you know, very very quickly on your palate. Um, and then it does follow up immediately with really nice dark chocolate notes um a touch of sweetness touch of coffee bitterness definitely finishes a little bit stickier than the regular version but um definitely a lot more going on in the flavor than on the aroma for this one just extremely over carbonated though i mean you really want the beer to like be able to breathe and like kind of just relax on your palate, but it's like so spritzy. It's like, whoa, it's like foaming up in your mouth, um, which is kind of weird. I mean, just because of the fact that the head didn't even stay, it just kind of spritzed away or whatever. Um, so I'm kind of perplexed about the way this, the, the inner workings of this particular beer. Um, I would say, you know, I'm not getting like a whole ton of the base beer. I'm not getting a whole ton of the Everett. I'm getting um, a lot of bourbon and a lot of chocolate and, and, and coffee, but I don't really taste like the, I'm not getting the creaminess that the Everett has. I'm not getting that luscious kind of uh, mouthfeel from it. This one, it's, you know, it's medium bodied, but it doesn't have that creaminess to it. It's too over carbonated for that. It does have great bourbon character. I mean, if you want a bourbon barrel aged beer, this is just like, probably over the top, but like I said before, over 26 months in bourbon barrels, what do you expect? Um, you know, it's a nice beer. I wouldn't exactly, I wouldn't be able to tell you that it's a barrel age ever though, um, if you did this blind. Um, it's just a very, very nice beer. Honestly, the barrel age version, you know, the more I take a few sips of it, it's a good beer, you know, but it's it's got a, kind of a more watery mouthfeel than you'd expect. Um, honestly, I expected that big body that the effort carries kind of faded away with the barrel aging. Um, definitely nice bourbon notes and chocolate notes. Is, and, and I am picking up some vanilla and coconut from the barrel as it warms up. Def, definitely getting a little coconut, um, some vanilla, but um, definitely just more, more, um, more of a different animal than the original beer for sure. So 
I'm going to sip on these just for not too much longer. It's already like four in the morning. So I'm going to sip these for just a couple minutes, think about it, give you guys the final thoughts and the ratings, and uh, wrap up this review. All right, guys. So I've been sipping on these for just a few minutes now. And um, yeah, I mean, my, my thoughts remain the same about this. Um, you know, this is probably one of those rare occasions that uh, I think, you know, less is more. Um, you know, stick with stick with the original. Um, I don't really see the need to uh, put this beer in, in bourbon barrels for 26, 28 months. Or maybe, you know, maybe barrel age it, but not for, you know, two plus years. I think um, it's an absolutely fabulous beer. Um, I just keep thinking as I'm sipping it how damn good it is. Um, it actually, um, the more I think about it, reminds me of a milk stout. It almost tastes like it has a lactose milk sugar in it. It's just so creamy and it's got that sweetness that you get in a milk stout, which I really, really love milk stout. So, um, you know, you could definitely convince me that the Everett Porter <laughs> is a milk stout, but it's not. Um, it's just absolutely delicious. You know, considering this is one of their generally staple beers, it's generally on tap um, and then released in bottles sometimes. Considering that, it's, it's a great reminder of, you know, Hill Farmstead's roots and where they came from um, and what kind of built them because um, it doesn't get much better than this, guys. If you like porters, if you like stouts, any dark beer in general, this is as good as it fucking gets, honestly, for a non-barrel-aged porter. It's fucking amazing. The barrel-aged version, guys, here's what I have to say about this. Um, it's a good lesson learned for me as somebody who's a big hill farmstead fan as somebody who's gone up there many times as somebody who's been maybe lured into the um rare trading rare releases this is a great example of really what it's all about this beer is good this beer is not incredible um it's it's you know it's an okay barrel aged version of this, which you can't even tell that it's a barrel aged version of this beer. I mean, it's just bourbon and chocolate and it's got a, a lesser mouthfeel. It's got a unbalanced carbonation level. Um, it's just, it's, it's sort of two noted, one more so one noted, more, mainly bourbon. I mean, it's not like it's anything where you could just talk about the flavors like with the, with the original. And you know, for the time you put in barrels and, and to come out like this, I would think that Sean might be a little disappointed by it because it's just so overpowering, it's so unbalanced, and the mouthfeel isn't there, and the carbonation side, and all that. So, um, what I'm trying to say is, it don't feed into hype too much, guys. Um, when you can get the Everett almost any day of the week, and get a giant jug of it, or as much as you want of it, and this only comes out every few years, and it's, you know, sells out in a few days, and it's a couple bottles per person, don't go crazy over this stuff, you don't, you don't need to, you know, maybe sometimes it'll be incredible, maybe sometimes it won't, and also, this is probably a case where this beer needs to, honestly, it needs to age for quite a while, which most people say, you try it fresh, then age it. This is definitely a beer that I, you know, I have two more bottles of this, about the max, and um, I'm letting it age for at least another year. I might even trade a bottle, but, um, you know, I'm interested to see if the base beer comes forward more and if the bourbon will die down a little bit because it might be a little bit more balanced. The last taste I'm going to tell you about is it's heavy on the sweetness. Again, I'm getting this spritzy overcarbonated kind of thing going on, which does not lend to a creamy mouthfeel at all, but very, very sweet, um, kind of brown sugar, caramelized sugar kind of sweetness, heavy on the bourbon again, which is pleasant, and then it finishes kind of dry, um, you know, dry bitterness, maybe some coffee bitterness, roasted malt, um, dark chocolate definitely. But it's nothing to go crazy over, and that's what I'm getting at. So, um, also the alcohol, guys. If anyone knows what the deal is with that, please let me know because, you know, it, it 
it's almost like a Bourbon County. I don't want to say this. It's almost like a Bourbon County light. Um, it really is. It, it reminds me of Bourbon County a lot. And I would venture to say that the alcohol in this beer is realistically between 11 and 12, but it tastes like maybe nine, uh, something like that. I don't know. It's definitely not 8%. I don't know where that's coming from. Probably because Sean didn't actually say what the percentage was, but, um, anyways, guys, that's it for this review. The regular Everett has a hundred on Beer Advocate. As I said, it is, as far as I know, I think it's still the number one American porter of all porters, which is honestly well do um it is fucking incredible i'm giving it a hundred i can't imagine a better porter in the world if you guys think there is one send it to me or let me know what it is and i'll try it but probably not going to happen 100 100 100 incredible 95 on this on beer advocate guys and not a ton of people have been able to try it because it's very limited um definitely not going 95 on this in fact i haven't even thought about it but um Oh, I'm going to give it the 90. I'm going to go A-. I don't want to be too rude um, because I think it's still a really, really good beer. And, you know, maybe I'd rate it higher if I wasn't comparing it to the original, but it's just um, it's an A- minus beer at best. Probably B+, plus really. But um, I'm going to go 90. Um, definitely not 95. I think if it ages out and it comes out really nice in a year or two, but my thing with beer is it should be ready when you release it. And uh, maybe next time he'll do maybe 20 months instead of 26, 28. I know the batch two was 18 months. So batch three was 26 months plus. So maybe batch two he thought wasn't strong enough and he aged it longer. I, I have no idea, but either way, guys, very, very, very fun tasting. Very, obviously I, I'm very appreciative of getting to try this beer. So with that being said, guys, I think this is a complete review. It's like 4.15 in the morning. I'm going crazy. Thanks for watching, and remember to comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next beer review. Check out the Facebook page, and signing off. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.